This conference will now be recorded. Okay, supply relationship management as well. Uh, predominantly now I am working into SAP Ariba module. So this is just about myself. Uh, I have seen like Jyoti Prakash is joined. Yeah, Jyoti, this is Ashok. Uh, you can quickly introduce yourself and then we can get into our core topics. Just unmute yourself and then introduce yourself. Maybe your name and your exposure towards SAP. I don't know what's the issue with Jyoti. Okay. Um, okay, let me start uh, sharing yeah. my screen. Is it audible? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I can, I can hear you. Yeah, myself, Jyoti Prakash Reddy. I'm currently working on SAP MM and WM module in an automobile okay. industry. So I have around eight years of experience in the SAP logistic modules. Oh, great. Thanks. So you are yeah. not working on my SAP IS. It, it's, it's your standard uh, MM and WM. Sorry, it's not IS Auto. You are working uh, the regular MM and uh, WM modules. Yes, yes, I am working on regular MM and WM modules. Great, great, fantastic, fantastic. Okay, so let me give some um, background about the the demo. So we have the mix of SAP and non SAP folks here. So I would be giving some of the ERP introductions, which might be boring for the people who come from the SAP background. So just bear with me uh, for time being, and then we will quickly jump into the core uh, Ariba topics. Okay. Um, so first of all, let me introduce what do you mean by SAP or what do you mean by an ERP? Okay. Actually, what, what do you mean by ERP? So you are hearing this word called ERP, SAP. Okay. See, to run any business, so whatever the business that is, Okay, to run any business, managing the resources are very much important. Okay, so we particularly we have three kinds of resources. One is the manpower and the money and the material. So these are the three important resources. We need to manage these three resources effectively so that you know uh, the ultimate goal of an industry or a uh, or an entity or an organization is to make the profit, right? So how effectively we are utilizing these resources and then bringing our properties or the data. Suppose let us say you are working on some non-profit organizations or it is a profit organizations. Ultimately the data is important. So we analyze the data and based on the data we will take the key decisions by analyzing the data. Okay. Suppose I will give you a simple example. Uh, if I, everybody is using the credit cards, end of the month, I would like to see what is the expenses that I made. If I log into my credit card application of the bank, right, then they would be showing showing some kind of chart where I could see, hey, this month my fuel expenses, this is my uh, cloth exp expenses, this is my food expenses. That is the way they are segregating it. And then it is giving a clear idea like I'm, purchasing more on the clothes or I am purchasing more on the fuel or I am doing more expense on the food items or I am doing some other things so that it will be giving me the idea based on the transactions which I made. So I am not separately taking this debt. I am not keeping an Excel sheet and then saving, hey, today I swiped my credit card for this purchase. I purchased this much grocery for this material and all. So what are the transaction I am doing it? The tool itself is able to keep that as a data record and on the data record, we are doing our data analytics. Okay. And similarly, you might be doing so many transactions, right? So if for your life, for your home, uh, you might be doing so many expenses, like you are paying your kids uh, school fees and you are buying something for your kids, you are buying groceries, you are buying something. Okay, like that you are having the home expenses. You might be using credit cards, debit cards, or you might be in some time cash also. But each and everything, there is a record. Suppose if you are maintaining an Excel sheet for the home purpose, even the Excel sheet can, can also be can call as a, as a ERP, okay, enterprise resource planning tool. Okay, so what is the amount that you are spending? What are the 
purchases you have made or what are the things that you are buying or what are, what are the ways that you are getting your income okay suppose you are getting your income through salary through rent and through as well as the interest that you are given for it so these are all different sources of income and this is where you are purchasing and what is the savings you are making so end of the day every data is available in the same excel sheet so what you are doing in case of a simple house example you are making each and every entry manually into the excel sheet and then you are tracking it okay but whereas in case of organization so if there are a lot of transactions are happening so you cannot make each person to make a manual entry in one excel sheet or something okay it takes too much time consumption and this is not the effective way and there is so much loss of data so that is why we are giving them a tool so that whenever they are doing any transaction suppose they are procuring something they are selling something they are storing something we are asking them to do it through a tool the tool we are calling it as the enterprise resource planning tool erp tool okay so this is erp the erp tool is enterprise resource planning tool so if we have in the market uh, different varieties of enterprise planning tools we have sap we have oracle we have people soft okay so we have worked there uh, like different erp tools are there even your simple excel sheet can also work as a erp tool okay the way you are using it okay. so end of the day in the enterprise what are the data like what are the transactions you are making those transactions will be coming okay those transactions are will be coming into the sap or whatever the erp tool automatically they are being saved as a records okay those record you are doing it suppose just let us say you have applied a bank loan okay so the bank will be giving the loan through their one tool okay their software so in there you will they will be having a record called your name your address your salary okay uh, your family who is the nominee or something like that and what is the amount the loan you have taken so everything is available at the same time okay whenever you are withdrawing something whenever you are depositing it depositing it okay using the same tool you are doing it that means it is tracking all the records or transactions and then effectively showing the report so that you can analyze it okay so what is the end of the use end use is to, to save the data in a tool reporting purpose why we do need to report if you need by based on the reports the data analytics will happen once the data analytics are there you can plan your strategies or you can you can effectively manage the things you can see where the suppose where the if you are doing more purchasing activity you are seeing like where you are procuring more okay i will give you a simple example for your home uh, thing you are procuring rice bag every month okay and you are procuring it for 2000 let us say and now uh, you got an idea saying that you just been to some other shop and that that person told sir i can give you the rice bag at 1500 now then the thinking will come if you do the rice bag from the other supplier or with other vendor or other departmental store you are going to save 500 rupees okay since in your brain you are able to record there is one rice bag every month you are doing transaction and you could see like what is the amount that you know uh, purchasing on that uh, back so it is 2000 you can remember it suppose if i ask okay uh, the tea powder okay tea powder price nobody can e easily remember okay now if you say like dmart is giving some kind of offer and you don't know what is the price that you previously procured and then how you can compare the dmart offer okay so all these things what we need is data is required okay so that is where in these erp tools we are doing all the transactions so now what is SAP? SAP is nothing but systems, applications. This is the definition of the SAP and the products in data processing. So this is the definition of SAP. Okay. SAP is in a tool. It is a kind of a tool. Okay. So in that tool, we are doing whatever the transactions related to these three resources. And ultimately the data is being saved and then we are trying to report on that. Okay. So SAP comes up with different modules, okay, like SAP Finance, okay, 
and SAP Materials Management, SAP Sales and Distribution, SAP Human Capital Management, Production Planning, Quality Management. Like that, we have different different modules are there. In SAP, there are two kinds of modules. One is functional modules, another one is technical module. So whatever we are seeing, these are all functional modules. Technical modules is in which the coding is involved. Okay and uh, some kind of scripting or something is involved those things we call it as the technical so we have ABAP okay and we have uh, security and we have the business intelligence module all this comes under the technical modules these are the core functional modules okay finance finance means what is the amount of their capital okay how the taxes are being calculated okay how you need to pay the supplier how you are collecting the uh, bills from customers, all these things. Okay. So whenever we, we, we talk about ERP, right, you can think of any simple departmental store and then you can apply. In the departmental store, what they will do, they procure the items and then they will sell the items. End of the day, they will make the profit. Okay. So how much item they need to procure, how much they need to sell, all that, all the data should be available. Suppose if I go and ask to a departmental store, do you have the tea powder? Then he will check in his system and he will say, yes, sir, this tea powder is there or this particular sugar is there or this particular something is there. If something is not there, then he will say the stock is not there. The stock would be coming tomorrow. How he is going to tell? That means he is checking in his system. That is one tool. That is not SAP tool. That is retail tool. Similarly, in SAP also, we can see the status of some things. and some of these businesses okay so here particularly in the finance model related to finance sales model related to sales materials management is related to your materials and as well as a procurement as well as a procurement so what do we mean by procurement procurement is nothing but buying of materials or buying of something okay as i just said on departmental store in the departmental store they are ordering from a particular agency okay suppose there is a distributor for the tea powder and you are ordering him 100 tea packets which is of you know 100 grams 100 tea powders uh, 50 packets and uh, 250 grams tea packets uh, some 50 packets that you have ordered like that okay so this is, means you are ordering somewhere that means you are procuring it Ultimately, on the other's perspective, from the dealer's perspective, the dealer is selling to you. Okay. And here, when you come to the retail, in the, in the, in the, in the departmental store, that person is selling to the customer. Okay. So, how we can say the profit? So, you should have how much is he is doing for the procurement and how much he is selling for it. Okay. Suppose let us say the tea powder 250 grams packet, the selling price for him from the a dealer is uh, 250 rupees he is selling it for 275 rupees then he is making a profit of 25 rupees on each packet right so you should he should have that record with him okay when he is buying something while selling to the customer some customers will come and bargain and some customers will negotiate hey i will take three packets can you give two rupees off or three rupees off like that okay how we can decide based on the selling price or based on the procuring price okay so now in the material management in sap material management sap material management deals with the material procurement and the material inventory inventory is nothing but storing those things suppose let us say the departmental store he got it from the dealer and then he is keeping in the store that is nothing but inventory inventory is nothing but the stock in the form so the money in the form of stock the money in the form of stock we are calling it as inventory by selling that inventory is creating money or is generating revenue let us say the simple example of tea powder see the tea powder from the dealer he got it from 250 rupees so that means he converted his 250 rupees into the inventory now he brought that into his shop and kept in his shop okay now it is been there somewhere okay and how you can track where the tea powder is if you go to Vijeta or if you go to Ratnadeep, if you ask any salesperson there or somebody, the service guys, they will simply tell go right, go on the top corner, the tea packets will be there like that. That means they're arranging in it a proper way and they can easily locate it. Okay. 
if you are very you know rare visitor to your kitchen then it's very challenging task for you you don't know where the sugar is you don't know where the other things is where the masala is okay if you try to cook something suppose if you go to some new home others home you don't know like where you are keeping all the things that means the track track the track the tracking of that material is very tough so that means in the system also it should tell where you are keeping that material okay and after that when the customer come and he picked up that particular inventory like the tea powder and then he is paying 275 rupees okay and then he is taking that material for his consumption now the 275 rupees coming into pocket now initially you you have you have given 250 rupees to the dealer and now you collected 275 from the customer okay so customer you are selling to the customer and you are procuring from the vendor right so now there are two terminologies coming so you are procuring from the vendor and you are selling to a customer in the sales side we have the receivables in the procurement side we have the payables we have the payables that means you for the vendor you are paying it for the customer you are collecting the price you are receiving the price okay this is the two just the differences so in particular in the material management we have this kind of inventory and as well as procurement okay so in the procurement from where you are procuring what kind of material you are procuring all these things will come into picture and once you procure how the supplier is going to send the goods and then how you are unloading into your warehouse and how you are storing those materials all this will come under the material management okay and now as i just introduced this term called procurement okay in the procurement we have a lot of business processes okay so when i use this word called business processes so once you become the sap consultant you will be used to this word called business processes okay procurement will have some process for each company they follow their own process but end of the day okay there will be some standard processes okay suppose if you want to buy some item how you are going to buy you need to look for a source or a vendor and then you are paying initially and then you are taking your material and you are keeping on your car and then you are coming that means transportation is your hat suppose if you are buying it from amazon okay amazon people they will ship it to you okay that means there are different processes okay in the procurement before buying suppose if you want to buy the lollipop and a laptop the procurement is completely different if you want to buy the lollipop what you will do you will go to simply nearby pawn shop or the department store and you will give 5 rupees and take the lollipop but if you buy your laptop you won't do that thing right what you will do first you have to define what is your laptop requirement whether you want the touch laptop non touch laptop what is the configuration and then you will see what is your budget okay whether you want to buy 50000 laptop or whether you want in 60000 70000 like that and then you will see for this configuration what are all the different brands are available which are good so if i go for hp what is the price if i go for dell what is the price if i go for lenovo what is the price okay then you decided okay i want to go with dell and again for dell you might be going with the uh, you, you you will check in flipkart you will check in amazon you will check in the nearby uh, smart or your bajaj electronics somewhere and you will see what is the price for the same laptop that means you are doing some kind of sourcing activity you know what kind of material you are going to buy but you are taking some time to do analysis from where i can buy what is the best price i am getting it what is the benefits i am getting okay this is the kind of process and then you will place the order and the supplier will deliver to you so this we are calling it as the procurement okay so now ariba is the tool which is used for the procurement okay previously now i am going to the sap ariba now i just introduced this tool called sap ariba what is this sap ariba okay see sap ariba initially it's not a sap tool in uh, year of 2000 uh, uh, 10 or 11 i guess they have procured the Ariba from Ariba management now it has become SAP Ariba the tool has become SAP Ariba okay in the SAP Ariba we do the procurement activity okay so what is the procurement activity we will slowly see what is a P2P cycle and all 
okay in ariba we have two kinds of modules one is the upstream module another one is the downstream module here you can see the upstream module another one is the downstream module ariba is a cloud source so we have the on premise and another one is cloud what do you mean by on premise means the server will be in our control and we are taking the maintenance of the server upgradation of the server everything will be with us cloud everyone knows it right cloud will be with a particular person and they are managing the upgradations the software upgradation everything will be done by them they will giving an instance to you and you will log into that okay and in that login you are just managing your business that we are calling it as the cloud okay so in sap ariba we have two basic things one is upstream and the other one is downstream so in the upstream there are few modules and in the downstream there are few modules we are going to see detail in detail what are these upstream and downstream modules okay and how the architecture of sap ariba will be there okay what are the components are there in sap ariba what is the use of each component that we are going to see okay so before going to that you should know what do you mean by p2p cycle okay i just explained right the procurement of laptop the first thing you need to identify what is the need okay so what is your laptop what configuration you want okay the specifications of your particular thing and then you will do sourcing of the supply sourcing in the sense you will asking for the quotations from different suppliers say this is what my laptop i want to procure 100 laptops so what is the best price that you can give okay and all these things we can do that we are calling it as the sourcing activity so in the sourcing activity once it is finally then you will not going to buy laptops from all these suppliers right maybe you can go going to buy with laptops from one supplier that we are calling it as a selecting the supplier so in the sourcing activate as uh, so sourcing activity we are going to select the supplier from this supplier we are going to buy the laptops okay and then after that you will do some kind of negotiation or then creating some contract document with them or you are making a contract with them hey i am going to buy 100 laptops from you at this rate okay and whenever i order that laptop you need to give okay it's kind of you know long term suppose uh, in a school right in a school i am i am printing the id cards then i can make a id card id card uh, printing company i can make a contract with them so every year I am giving this kind of uh, ID cards, this, this, these photos and all, then you need to print and deliver to me. Okay, I am making a contract. So the price is this much. For each identity card, I am going to pay 10 rupees for four years. This is my contract. That means there is a business with them for four years with this school. This contract is also having business. And for me also, I am having a fixed supplier where I need, I need not to worry about a uh, contractor. Hey, who can... The, uh, give id cards for me so both the sides it's a benefit the supplier is getting business and at the same time we are having a supplier who can supply the materials okay after that we will raise a purchase order okay uh, sorry we will raise the internal purchase requisition once that's approved then we are going to raise the purchase order don't get confused with this technology if you are non sap background or non procurement background in detail we are going to discuss in our regular sessions what is a purchase requisition what is a purchase order okay and then once you release the purchase order purchase order is a legal document to the supplier on which the supplier can supply those materials against the document and after that he will give you the invoice against that invoice we will make the payment this we are calling it as the p2p okay so each and everything we are doing in the system and every document will be saved and that will be served as a data in our analytics purpose or in our data reporting okay so you are not doing somewhere and then you are saving all this information in your tool for reporting so here you are using the sap tool itself ariba tool itself to conduct the key sourcing activities to find a supplier and then you are creating the contracts to uh, to create the contract with the supplier and then you are creating purchase requisition and on the purchase requisition you are creating a purchase order and each and everything okay so this is the simple p2p process okay uh, in which the procurement will there so for that how you are utilizing your ariba how you are utilizing the data to do the purchase to do the supplier sourcing what is the data required to do the purchase requisition what is the data required to create the purchase order what is the data required all these things we are going to see okay
and in the procurement we have two kind of procurements direct procurement and indirect procurement see indirect procurement in the sense suppose uh, let us say you are manufacturing cars whatever the item that is going into car suppose if you take the tires if you take the steering if you take clutches wire seat mirror seat and everything will be going into the car assembly and by selling that car assembly you are making the money so direct procurement is nothing but the material the procurement of raw materials which are directly involved in the manufacturing and by selling that manufactured product finished product you are creating revenue so procurement is nothing but procurement of raw materials or semi finished materials which will be used in your finished part manufacturing and by selling those you are creating revenue whereas indirect procurement is which is supporting to your direct procurement suppose you are using printing okay printing you are using papers you need stationary items stationary items we are not going not going to sell we are consuming those we are consuming for our business purpose similarly water bubbles similarly services like your room cleaning services electric services all these things comes under indirect procurement indirect procurement or which is our consumables okay to run our business or to support our to support the finished goods manufacturing or to run the complete entity those we are calling it as indirect procurement suppose you are procuring uniforms for your employees so employees are going to consume it okay that we are calling it as indirect procurement okay so you should know what do you mean by indirect procurement and direct procurement so in sap core mm we are using direct procurement in ariba we will be using indirect procurement okay so this is how ariba architecture will be there so we have this uh, ariba buying side okay uh, this is your core sap system let us say and that will be integrated something called cig cloud integration gateway and then this is our ariba cloud system so we have ariba sourcing ariba contracting and then ariba supply chain collaboration so what are the documents you are creating that will go through ariba network so ariba network is again a kind of one topic that we will be seeing through the ariba network we have the suppliers okay so now there is a central thing called ariba network where the buyers who are buying they will also one account and the suppliers who are supplying they will also have one account so this is the central lobby or the central gateway where you can see all the documents will be transacted from buyer to supplier so ariba network is very important that is where ariba got huge success because this it has lot of supplier base who are there in the ariba network okay there are lot of advantages with this ariba network because lot of suppliers are connected to ariba network and the way the document transactions the document exchanging between the supplier and the buyer is made quite easy okay that we are all we are going to see okay and now in the upstream right in the upstream the first module we have so let me take to this uh, slide so in the upstream we have these kind of modules okay the first thing is ariba sourcing contract management and ariba supplier management in ariba supplier management we have two kind of modules slp supplier life cycle and performance and supplier risk management okay so in the ariba sourcing so uh, ariba sourcing what we will do is we are just going to create some of the sourcing event again i will explain in the in our daily class what do you mean by sourcing event okay how you are create the sourcing activity and then finalizing the suppliers what are the activities or what are the configuration you are supposed to do to conduct this sourcing that and all we are seeing in our regular class and then what do you mean by contract management how you are going to create the contracts what are the different types of contracts what kind of uh configuration you are supposed to do being ariba consultant to support the end users to create the contracts okay and then what do you mean by supplier enablement supplier management sorry in then what do you mean by supplier okay how you are going to onboard a supplier what do you mean by supplier life cycle performance what are the stages involved in the slp okay again what do you mean by supplier risk what does mean by risk categorization what are the different risk domains all these things we are going to see and then in the downstream we have ariba buying see this we are calling it as again operational procurement now this is being called as bni also sap bni buying and invoice see this is a strategic thing this is a operational thing upstream is a strategic thing and your downstream is a operational thing to make you understand it's very simple okay uh, i have one departmental store 
what i did is right i made a contract with them hey, whenever something is required my son will come with a book okay where in which my name and id will be there otherwise you have one book with you okay whenever my son or my family members are coming that means the representation of my is coming to your shop you can give whatever they want and make the entry of the bill here okay and the limit is you should not give for each thing more than thousand rupees if they are going more than thousand you simply deny them hey please take come with your father or come with your this this person okay uh, and then then only give if if item is more than thousand rupees that is the way of contract i have made so that is the strategic thing that i did here i have not purchased anything yet i just made the oral discussions negotiations with them and then we both came to an agreement saying that this person representatives will come and they are going to buy whatever they want it and then i am going to make on 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 his name i have one page in my records in my book and then i will going to enter and if any item is exceeding more than 1000 rupees i should not sell to that person and this particular person should come to buy that so this is where i am controlling my expense so when coming to the operational procurement my kid every day is going and he is buying whatever the chocolates he want whatever the things he want he is buying from me that is nothing but operational buying that means against the contract or against the agreement you are doing your repetitive of procurement that we are calling it as the operational procurement or okay, you need not to worry about the price and each and everything you just go to that particular shop and buy suppose if i ask my kid to buy a chocolate what he will do he will go for the department store which he wants which he which he like or he might be going wherever he wants okay and for me right the department store and myself we come with an agreement saying that if i give 10000 business in this month that suppose if my purchasing is more than 10000 he is he is giving me a 5% rebate he is giving me that is the agreement we have from the department store and myself so with this contract i am gaining some rebate or from discount from him saying that so if, if the 10000 purchases are there then he is giving 5% rebate okay if i don't have this what my kids and my family will do they will go to different different stores and they will bring it okay so now if i make all this purchase at one place then i am getting getting a 5% discount this is what the strategy is okay this is what the business is doing okay so in the operational buying we create purchase requisitions purchase order okay all this stuff we are doing it okay and we have something called guided buying module what do you mean by sap guided buying module what is uh, in the buying what you what are the documents or what are the settings what are the configurations we are doing what do you mean by approvals okay how to create approvals okay purchase orders goods receipt okay and then invoice what are the different invoice and what do you mean by catalogs how we are going to use the catalogs all these things we are going to see in our downstream there is some other module called supply chain this is in integration with sap mm okay these are all also will be integrated we have a different session for the integration as well so we are covering the integration of cag as well but not in detail the high level integration of sap mm and cag the cag itself is a different course that uh, subhi is offering okay so i don't want to talk about that but we will be seeing the basic integrations between how the integrations will be made with sap ariba and sap mm so those things we are going to see okay and in the supply chain collaboration what are the different collaborations processes we have those things also we are going to cover in our things but we are not seeing the complete configurations because supply chain collaboration needs sap mm knowledge and as well as sap ariba cag knowledge okay so in depth knowledge is required to configure these and to run those processes so that's why we are just offering this as a add on uh, with the basic cycles how the cycles will be there okay but we are in in our curriculum we are going to see the detailed ariba sourcing detailed ariba contract okay and then ariba slp detailed ariba slp we are not going to cover the supply risk okay uh, because uh, none of the customers are implementing ariba supply risk but you, we will be giving some kind of videos where you can go through the uh, the knowledge so by this time you'll understand first you need to concentrate on the business terminology or terminology related to ariba once you are bit acquainted with that or bit comfortable with the terminology then you can uh, 
build your knowledge by going through different different uh, videos and uh, uh, books and all okay those those things and all i am going to provide you different video links and as well as different books that i am going to give the complete content okay and ariba spend analytics we are not going to see okay in our course and ariba buying invoice we are going to see what is the buying what is guided buying what are the catalogs and what are the invoicing okay apart from that as part of the buying and invoice we are going to cover approvals okay how the approvals will be there okay and then we are going to see the the integrations between ariba sap mm and uh, ariba uh, and how the integrations with the cag okay what kind of configurations you are supposed to do and you should know all these things okay and in the supply chain collaboration we are going to talk about the cycles what are the different collaborations are there okay how the collaborations are working okay uh, this is all about our course and uh, this is about the quick demo on that uh, now i am opening the gates to have to any questions if anybody has any questions now you can raise your voice unmute yourself and you can ask the questions you can ask the questions and one thing i just want to make with this knowledge you can sell yourself as if you practice properly whatever i am teaching daily and if you learn thoroughly then you can sell yourself as a three years plus consultant in ariba upstream and downstream okay and current market and all see uh, for sap there will be always calls okay but um, i cannot say like there is a huge demand or you know 100% uh, complete demand if you know ariba then people would take it's not like that okay the demand may vary depending on the situations and uh, things okay which i cannot I'm, I'm talking genuinely and honestly here okay you just improve your knowledge and learn ariba completely and then keep your resume in the naukri and then you try okay the openings will be there but it's not something like huge okay but you need to do your minimum hard work and homework to bring yourself as a SAP Ariba 3 plus years consultant. Within SAP market, you should sell at least yourself as 4 plus or 3 plus. Otherwise, you won't get calls. Okay. And if you have SAP MM knowledge is not mandatory. But if you have SAP MM knowledge, that will be going to be an advantage. And we are giving some of the SAP MM basic stuff in 2 to 3 classes. Like you should know some of the transaction codes and all these things. And we are going to give some of the videos where you can enhance your knowledge on the SAP MM side. But it's not the end-to-end -end complete course. Some of the uh, things which is required to run your Ariba show. Okay, those kind of uh, knowledge articles we are going to provide. And it will be take more or less 45 days to 60 days. And daily class will be 45 to 1 hour. 45 minutes to 1 hour. And the portal will be provided by Subu. Uh, you you need to check with him on the portal and the fees related to that portal okay and for the fees particulars also you can be in touch with Sub. any other questions yeah one general query from my end mm. yeah please uh, and currently what type of projects are going on ariba like implementation your uh, support projects in india see in the market both are going sir we cannot say like only the implementation or only the support project. Uh, nowadays, from past three years, the trend, the trend is uh, everyone is moving to S4 migration. And as part of S4 migration, SAP has sold Ariba as one of their, you know, under the umbrella, S4 umbrella, they are selling Ariba. So that's why most okay. of the customers are implementing Ariba as well. Okay, And those who have already implemented Ariba, then there will be the a continuous development thing right the phase continuous development phase in that phase they keep support there will be some issues or they might be roll out into some other new plants new countries like that the, the support will be there okay but we are covering on both the perspectives uh, as implementation and as well as the uh, support okay um, so we are going to cover both the things not on single things
And what is the difference between SRM module and uh, Ariba? I'm sorry, I just muted myself. Uh, uh, what, what is the difference between SRM and uh, Ariba, right? You are asking? Yes, yes. See, SRM and Ariba, the architecture is completely different because Ariba is a different tool and uh, SRM is developed by SAP itself. Okay, but the, the core concepts remain same. The PR to P1 goods received invoice and everything remains same. The UI and the, the user interface and the, the, the adaptability by the users and all in Ariba is quite, quite easy. And the supplier base, we don't have the concept called supplier base in SRM, but whereas in Ariba, we have this called Ariba network. Okay, uh, that is the thing is there. Okay. Okay. But the functionality, right? The business functionality is same. If you are using SRM or if you are using it, the business functionality remains same. This is something like you are using your Android phone and uh, your uh, iPhone. Apple. Okay. iPhone, right? Yes. The functionality remains same, but the user interfaces and the speed and all these things, other things will be different. Right? And data processing, cloud, etc. Correct. May vary. Yes. And now SRM is completely stopped by SAP. So they are not selling it and they are not also providing any support for the existing SRM uh, customers. Okay. They are, uh, okay, fine, fine. So, yeah, no problem. Harish is here, sir. Yeah, Harish. So uh, as a end user, I have knowledge in P2P. So can I go with uh, Ariba downstream only uh, without uh, can, both up and yeah. downstream? Can, can I go with uh, only downstream? See, I got your question. Uh, see, Ar Arish, let me clear one point. See, why you are learning Ariba you used to get the Ariba job, right? And you want to sell yourself as Ariba consultant in the SAP market. That is the goal, if my understanding is correct, right? So if you narrow down uh, only to downstream, then your opportunities will be less. Okay. Did you get what I'm saying? You can learn downstream, it's not an issue. You can learn only upstream, you can learn only downstream, but in the training market, nobody will tell only, nobody teach uh, only downstream or only upstream as a package we are giving the complete upstream okay. and downstream so we cannot give only upstream or we cannot uh, teach only downstream it's up to you if you want to learn only downstream and you want to concentrate only on downstream and then sell yourself it's up to you and while remaking your regime don't call upstream but only downstream see if you have more focus and more portfolio then the hitting ratio of your calls will be more if you reduce some of the skills right and then the things will be less so that is the thing i just want to make clear ah, okay sir understood thank you okay compared to so, mm and wm versus ariba mm -hmm. which is having more opportunities in current market so that, I cannot comment on that, frankly speaking. Okay, uh, it depends upon the uh, business situations and the market because I'm, I'm not completely currently following the market. But people are getting calls on the SAP MM side and Ariba side. Uh, I think WM is moved to EWM, so a lot of people are moving to EWM side from the WM to EWM. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Okay. So, any other questions, or uh, otherwise we can wind up the session. No questions from my end. Thank you. Thank you. So, if you want to have questions, yeah. you can drop off. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, just giving. 
yeah thank you thank you thank you all yeah thank you thank you